What's going on everybody? Tom here with Keto Lifestyle and welcome to another free ketogenic recipe just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet and you like what you see here, consider subscribing at the end of the video. Now today we're going to be making a ketogenic take on a bagel. And while I've seen keto bagel recipes pop up from time to time, the ones I've tried didn't really do it for me. So today we're going to be making a bagel. Yes, a true keto bagel that I designed from the ground up. And if you're curious of how I did that, after this video, I'm gonna do like a behind the recipe type thing and show you guys the steps I took to get this recipe where it is. But with that, let's just jump into today's recipe. Let's jump right into things by going over our ingredients. First, we have eight ounces of almond flour, 11 ounces of mozzarella cheese, one tablespoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of dry active yeast, a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream, three tablespoons of water, and one egg. To start this recipe, we're gonna add our baking powder and salt into our almond flour. And we're gonna use a fork to go ahead and mix this until it is well incorporated. In the process, it's a good idea to use that fork to break up as many clumps of almond flour as you possibly can. This can drastically affect the outcome of the recipe. Once you're satisfied with that, set it aside and add your yeast to the water, followed by the heavy whipping cream. Then we're gonna go ahead and mix this together. As a note here, it doesn't really matter what temperature the water or any of the other ingredients are because the yeast is used strictly for flavor. There's nothing for it to feed on, so it's not gonna cause any type of rising of the bagels, but it does add the flavor that I felt it was missing. Now go ahead and crack your egg into the heavy whipping cream and water mixture and proceed to whisk it in there until it is a smooth and uniform mixture. Now let's focus on the cheese. Go ahead and melt this in a microwave or a double boiler if you don't like microwaves until it is a nice, even melted consistency. Make sure you don't burn the cheese, so mix it occasionally. Now add this cheese directly to the almond flour, followed by that mixture containing the eggs that we made just a moment ago. Proceed to knead and fold the dough until it becomes a nice, smooth consistency. It can take some time, so be patient, but eventually it will become a smooth dough. As you can see here, there are no chunks of almond flour or cheese, so we're good to start portioning our bagel into five four ounce balls. Keep your balls of dough as uniform in weight as possible, that way they all bake at the same rate. To start shaping your bagels, take one portion of the dough and start to draw it out in a snake-like formation. You can do this in your hands or by rolling it on a hard surface. Once it's between six and eight inches long, go and make a circle out of it and pinch together the two connection points. Make sure that this is sealed very well. It doesn't really matter how smooth the bagel is, but that connection point is very important. At this point, I like to increase the size of the hole in the bagel so that when they rise, it doesn't swell shut. Then I'll take the bagel, run it in a little bit of olive oil, and then some of that brunch life seasoning from Fresh Jacks before setting it back on the plate. When you run out of that seasoning, go ahead and add more. I'm not really measuring this, but I'd guess I took about two tablespoons of it for the entire batch. Additionally, you'll notice that I'm spinning it with my finger in the center of the bagel. That's also helping to draw out that hole and stop it from closing up as the bagels rise. At this point, I'll let my bagels rest while I preheat my oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Now carefully put the bagels in your oven for about 10 minutes. As a note, they are on a piece of parchment paper so that they do not stick to the baking sheet. After the 10 minutes are up, go ahead and pull out the bagels and they should be a nice golden brown color. Now set them on your stove to cool for about 30 minutes before you try to eat them. And here is our finished product. And now that you guys have seen how to make it, it is time for the taste test. So what I have here is half of a bagel with some cream cheese that I've spread on it and we're gonna use this for the taste test. I did not toast this one, but trust me, they toast up pretty well. Okay guys, that is a very good bagel, I have to say. Now, the problem I had with a lot of the other keto bagels is A, they didn't taste quite right, B, they weren't chewy enough. So this is a very chewy bagel, just like you'd have from a regular bagel. And I find that that little bit of yeast that we threw in there, though it didn't help make it rise or anything, it adds that flavor that I felt it was missing. Plus, that brunch life seasoning from Fresh Jacks is absolutely amazing. So before we jump into the whole behind the recipe section, I just wanna remind everybody that the recipe and macros are always written down in the description box, so you can always find it there. But now, if you guys are interested in checking out how this was developed, hang tight. If not, I'll see you in the next one. 
Now, from time to time, I get questions from people asking me how I convert a recipe from a non-keto recipe to a keto recipe, and I usually tell them lots of failure. So I thought it might be interesting to show you guys a picture of each step of the development process for this recipe, and you can see just what I've changed each time to make it to the recipe that it currently is. Now it's okay to laugh, guys. Here is the first attempt. As you can see, they spread out way too far. Now, I knew going into this that I was going to have to use cheese to keep things together instead of using like xanthan gum or husk powder because we wanted to have that chewy consistency. But these I thinned out a little bit too far. Normally people use several eggs in these recipes and I was trying to eliminate that because I feel like it gives it kind of an eggy texture. So I went down to one egg, but then I had to thin it out with the water and heavy cream mixture. Unfortunately, in this case, it was just too wet. So when you try to bake something and it spreads out way too far, that means you have too much liquid in there. You need to dry it out some. So your options are either to increase your dry ingredients or cut down on the wet ingredients. And since I didn't want to up the carbs too much or make this a very, very large batch, I decided to do the smart thing and just cut back on the water a little bit. I believe this original recipe had a little over a quarter cup of water and two tablespoons of heavy cream in it. For comparison between batches, the top left bagel is from batch one. The other three are from batch two. At this point, I had them baking at 375 degrees, and the top middle one I pulled out at 11 minutes, the top right one was in at 13 minutes, and the one on the far right I pulled out after 15 minutes. This was to help me experiment with the proper bake time and temperature. As you can see in this picture, the one for 13 minutes would have been best, but I decided to up it to 400 degrees and see if I could get better results. The bottom three bagels are the same recipe as batch number two, but they were baked at 400 degrees for 8, 9, and 10 minutes respectively. The numbers are indicated beneath the bagels. At this point, you can see that 9 minutes at 400 would have been good, but I felt like they still spread out a little bit, so I made a comment that, you know, they're still a little bit too wet and I needed to adjust that. But let's go ahead and flip them over and see what the bottoms look like, because maybe the bottom is too burnt. Immediately after flipping them over, I noticed that 375 simply wouldn't work. We need to go at least 13 minutes in order to get them to be not doughy, and the bottom was way too burnt for comfort on that one. Now looking at the 400 degree mark, I see the one around 9 minutes looked about right. I didn't want to go much darker than that, but it was still a little doughy. So I made the decision to not only make the dough a little bit thicker by reducing some of the water, but also to bake it at 425 degrees and try to figure out a proper temperature there. The image here actually is a reformulation number three, and all I did here was drop the water again. The top three bagels were baked at 400 degrees, the bottom two were baked at 425. And more specifically, I believe the bottom one was eight and 10 minutes at 425. As you can see, the 10 minutes being in the bottom right corner of the tray looks the absolute best. So that was the bake time that we went with. Now upon tasting these things, I noticed that I wanted them to be a little bit chewier, so I decided to add one more ounce of mozzarella cheese. At the time, there was 10 ounces in there, which is how we got the 11 in our final recipe. And here's the picture of the final recipe before I went ahead and filmed the video. At this point, I was just experimenting with the size of the hole that you had to make in the bagel, but these looked really good and they tasted exactly like I wanted them. So then, it was time to productize the recipe. With that guys, I think it's time to close the video. If you like this kind of how it was done type video section, let me know in the comment section because I've never done one of these before. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor guys, hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.